Hey everybody, I'm Tony Fleming, Fleming's Ultimate Garage. Thank you for joining me on today's what I call collector car video. You know, I talk about this sometimes in some of the other cars we get, not all the cars because they aren't all collectibles or they aren't all what I might say future collectibles. You say, Tone, how could you possibly know the future and predict it and say that this is a future collectible? And I'm gonna say, you know what? You're absolutely right. I don't know anything. However, let me present to you some facts and then you make the decision from there. So imagine low production cars, one of maybe 1,200-ish cars like this right two owners this is uh, we're doing this video in 2023 it's 16 years right two owners over the last 16 years this has 3,000 miles on it right been driven around a couple hundred miles a year to cars and coffee shows and stuff like that first year car all of those things, all of those bullets right there make for a fabulous car. And then we're going to look at some other things that add even more value to it, more collectability. So I'm saying to you, like, you know what? We missed out on the early 60s vintage GTKR. Maybe you, uh, maybe you missed out on a Buick Grand National or a GNX, right? This is potentially the next collector car. You're talking about manual transmissions, you're talking about over 500 horsepower, you're talking about factory supercharged cars, not to mention this is the last of the real Shelby cars before Ford took over and started producing those cars. Anyway, those are just some bullets in my mind, right, in my mind that say to me, collector car. All right, so Torch Red in these cars looks amazing, right? Throw in the white stripes on there, and they are performance-looking cars. There's no doubt in there. The original wheel on the car looks good. This has the original Goodyear style on it as well. Uh, and so I consider this like a museum car, right? Because it's uh, just unmolested, off the showroom, just the way it was born, kind of that kind of thing. But most importantly, like we want to add to this is... Uh, is original paint. And you say, well, Tony, how do you know if it's original paint? If you haven't owned it since it was new, you don't know if the owners are telling you the truth. And I say, you know what? Those are all really good questions. Let me solve that for us today. So this right here is an electronic paint meter. What it does is measures the millions of an inch thick, right? Millions of an inch thick paint. So a body shop might paint a fender on a car, make it blend and look really nice. You could never tell the difference. However, it's much thicker paint than the rest of the cars because when these are painted at the factory, they're painted in like a hospital-like environment, right? And so what we do is we take this here and it's acceptable for these to be somewhere between uh, around two to three millionths of an inch thick variance. It's when it jumps up to five to seven to nine difference, we know it's been painted, right? So we have uh, here, we have 5.5, 4.5. And right as we walk around the car, they're like all over the place here. This is uh, there, 6.0. Oh, 6.5 so like you could go around the whole thing and you'll see that all in there seems to be all original factory paint right that's a big piece of it but not to mention it looks shiny in this showroom right why because it's nice paint it's this really nice factory paint and these hoods are special for these cars it's what makes these mustangs different and you can see clearly how nice uh, each one of those letters is how crisp you can read it in there okay and that's the important part. That's how you know quality paint. The, cl the clarity of the letter determines how great the paint is. For instance, forget all this. Look at the ceiling in the paint. You can see all the light bulbs, the ribs in the ceiling, the HVAC system. You can see all that in there. That's when you pull into a parking lot at night, like a Cars and Coffee or whatever, and those cars glow. That's exactly what you're getting here. All right, so we have many clients who buy from us who love cars. They just love cars. They're not super mechanical, and I don't blame them. I'm not, a, I'm not, I'm, I like to tinker. I don't like to, like, rebuild the dash or whatever. But in the case of where I'm going with this here is, is they don't really care what's under the hood. They care that it runs and drives well. However, I like to show this off for another reason. Let's say you decided you wanted to show your friends or go to a Cars and Coffee or a car show and open the hood. You want to be able to show how really nice it looks under here. And this is essentially showroom fresh and brand new, right? And it is back to the, my original statement bone stock, right? Original air box is still on here. Factory pulley is still on here. All of the factory decals are still all in their original places, man. This is a time capsule, right? And we see things like here, the engine builder, the Romeo engine builder for this. These are all hand-built engines, right? Signed by the engine builders, right? Their signatures are on that tag right there. It is a super cool piece. You want to show that off when you open the hood. It's really, really a nice thing. Again, back to detail, clean. I mean, you can see, man, this thing is like brand new. You might want to start dining out here. Maybe the kids want to come out and have dinner because you can eat off of it. I don't know. Maybe that's a little much, but you get where I'm going with it.
I don't know why I'm laughing so much because some people are making funny faces at me. Anyway, let's get serious and down to business, all right? Okay, so um, why was I here? Because I wanted to show you something that I feel is like important. And you say, well, Tone, how the trunk is important in a, in when I'm purchasing a car? Well, I'm going to tell you why it's important. Because a car like this isn't really a daily driver for somebody. They didn't throw their luggage in here. They weren't carrying picnic baskets, spilling their beer in here and doing whatever. This is a, a show car was in somebody's garage or their museum or something like that because all of the plastic is so nice in here. This has the upgraded audio system with the subwoofers back here, uh, all kind of a, a original things. Even the struts that hold up the trunk lid are, are original because they're, I don't know, it's just cool. It's a cool piece. And then you throw in the call outs, right? This is this is a nice styling upgrade here. It shows us like an old school Mustang taillight. However, it's modernized. This call out here is modernized, a dual exhaust. And the truth of the matter is, if I was to take that emblem off, 99% of the people will know that this is a Shelby right away. All right, so you're walking up to your great looking Shelby GT500. You go, man, this is a good looking car. And it is a good looking car, right? But a lot of times, you're not gonna be outside the car, you're gonna be inside the car, and that's where I wanna spend some time for a moment. I'll tell you why. Once we get in here, what I love about these cars is not only are they fast, but they're real world usable. And what do I mean by that? Well, for instance, we have power seats, right? And we have uh, climate control, and we have the Shaker 1000 audio system in here. We have power windows and cruise control, and all the luxury accoutrements that you might expect in uh, a modern exotic car, as well as 500 plus horsepower on our way to 600 horsepower, but let's say 500 easy horsepower, right? and a comfortable interior. This is a 3,000 mile car, man. Look at the interior of this thing. This is not doctored. This isn't like photoshopped or whatever. I'm not sure anybody's even sat here. The, the, somebody didn't kick the door open when they're trying to get out of the car. They're not throwing their briefcase on the seat. It's like that kind of car. You know, it's not a daily driver that somebody, you know, used in the rain and the snow, what have you. This was a uh, special. The back seat is really nice. And I go on and on about them because I get excited because I think to myself, you know, 3,000 miles in 16 years. In 16 years, that's pretty low, right? This is really just uh, uh, somebody's baby. Anyway, I'm hoping it's yours. All right, so we want to close up this video. We want to close it up as a collector car video. And you say, Tone, I hear you keep saying that, but do you know? And your answer is, not for sure, but pretty sure, right? Let's run down it real quick one more time. Low production figures. If they built 2 million Fords this, that year, 2007, and there's only a little over 1,000 of these built, that's a low production figure, right? Original paint. 3,000 miles, first year of production. I maybe repeat myself because I get too excited about that. Hand-signed engine, impeccable interior, showroom new, right? All of these things add up to a future collectible, in my opinion. Anyway, call us, 301-816-1000. We'll find a way to get this super low mileage GT500 in your garage. If you don't mind, hit the uh, share button down below. We'll get that message out there to everybody. Subscribe to the channel. we got new stuff coming out all the time. And you might want to share it with your friends. Uh, I would believe that they would like to see it as well. <laughs>